What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2007 Volvo XC90. In front of me, we have our OE suspension refresh kit, which we have pieced together here at FCP Euro. And I want to talk a little bit about what's included and some of the DIYs that we're going to get into. In this kit, included but not limited to, we have front control arms, we have new ball joints, sway bar end links, inner and outer tie rods, front and rear struts and shocks, as well as all the mounting hardware to replace all these parts. Today, specifically, we're going to focus on the front control arms. We're going to be installing new Delphi arms as well as new ball joints. Typically, you want to do these anywhere from 80 to 100,000 miles, depending on the kind of terrain the vehicle sees. The XC90 behind us has 195,000 miles and we're unsure of its previous repair history, so it is absolutely due for some control arms. The ball joints as well are original. These are pretty tired. People don't typically replace them as they are a press fit, but we'll show you how to get those out. But before we get started on this DIY, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this job. For this job, we're gonna need two different size torque wrenches. We have a half inch drive and a 3 8 drive. We have a 15 millimeter, a 13 millimeter, and a 21 millimeter wrench as well as sockets to counterpart with them. In addition to that, we have a 10 millimeter socket, a 19 millimeter socket, and a 21 millimeter socket. We also have a six millimeter hex bit should you need to counter hold your ball joints. We have a small swivel. You can have a couple handy extensions with you as well. We have a half inch drive and a 3 8 drive ratchet. We have a big hammer, a big pry bar, and then some nice to haves but not necessary are this Volvo specific ball joint installation tool. We're gonna go ahead and do this without the special tool as most of you are not gonna have this at home, but we will leave a link in the description below for the part, as well as a video on our very own Jason Van Gordon demonstrating how to use this tool. In addition to that, an electric ratchet's always nice, an electric impact gun for the big hardware and our lug bolts, and then some really, really nice to haves, but not mandatory, is always a wire brush, a paint marker, some anti-seize, and some brake clean just to clean the area up. Now that we know what tools we're gonna to be using for this DIY, let's go ahead and get started. All right, my good people, we're under the XC90. Before we start on removing our wheels, we're gonna go ahead and hop underneath and remove our belly pan. This is gonna give us access to our inner hardware for our control arms. So we have six 10 millimeter bolts to remove. I'm just gonna grab the electric ratchet and zap them off. With all those removed, you can simply pull this off and set it to the side. And now we can lower the car to eye level and get ready to remove our wheel. The process for the passengers has to be identical to the driver's side. So to get the wheel off, you need a 19 millimeter socket. So while I have you at this height, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect a couple items up here. And then we're gonna get back underneath the XC90. All right, next up is gonna be to remove our ABS sensor from the holding bracket on the strut. It's just a rubber grommet. I'm gonna pull it out. Sometimes you can give them a little twist to help them out. And we have two 21 millimeter nuts that we're gonna remove. We're gonna counter hold with an 18 millimeter wrench, 21 on our impact gun. Now underneath the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and start removing some of our hardware, starting with this 21 millimeter nut underneath our ball joint. And now that we've zapped that off, we're gonna give it a couple whacks with our hammer just to make sure that's gonna separate itself from the ball joint. These are steel arms, it's a steel knuckle, and we're replacing the ball joint so we're not too worried about damaging anything. Obviously, if these were aluminum, you would not want to do that. You would want to use a pickle fork or ball joint separator. There we go. With that free, we're going to grab our 21 millimeter wrench and an 18 millimeter socket, and we're going to remove one of our inner bolts, 21 millimeter nut up top, 18 millimeter bolt down at the bottom. Next, we have two 15 millimeter bolts that we're going to go ahead and break free and remove. Just careful with this cooler line that runs above it. For the passenger side, because these are pretty tight, I'm gonna go ahead and use a 15 millimeter impact socket on a small swivel extension with a half inch ratchet just to break them free. On the driver's side, you have a lot more room to work with. You can use just a regular socket directly on your ratchet. This side, you have your oil pan in the way. With our 15 freed up, we can go ahead and work on prying the arm off our ball joint end. And then it's just a matter of getting the old arm out. We have our old arm out. Now we're gonna work on removing the ball joint. 
This is where things get even more fun. All right, we have two 13 millimeter bolts holding in our ball joint. And then at this point, there's a couple ways you can remove these. You can use a threaded on tool that has a slide hammer built into it. You can take a hammer and some sort of pick or chisel and work at these flat spots right here. The Bobo was kind enough to give you a little bit of a notch to work from. We're gonna go ahead and grab our air hammer just because we have compressed air here in the shop. So we're gonna go ahead and work that with a chisel end and just work on blasting this out. This is a press fit, so they're pretty tight on there. You'll never get it off if you just grab it and pull. So let's grab our air hammer and we'll show you where exactly you wanna hit. You can see where I have my gun set up right now. There's a small ridge there. You have the same thing on the other side. If you're using an air hammer like mine, you just have to kind of wiggle your way in. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna put on some safety glasses and I'm gonna put in some ear protection. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab a wire wheel and just kind of clean this up a bit, hit it with some anti-seize and we'll prep the uh, new ball joint ready for install. With our area nice and cleaned up, you can choose to do this, you don't have to, but I like to use a little bit of anti-seize in these tight spots. And then just like we mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can use that Bobble specialty tool. However, we're gonna go ahead and install this without it just to show you kind of how that's gonna look and uh, give you a rough idea as most of you, including myself, don't necessarily have a tool like that available at home. We're gonna go ahead and start snugging these up by hand. 13 millimeter socket. Now that we know they're fully engaging, I'm gonna use the electric ratchet just to snug it in the rest of the way, making sure to go evenly on side to side. You just wanna be mindful you keep it as evenly as possible so it doesn't get crooked in there and get stuck. And secondly, you don't wanna bend the ears on the ball joints as well. All right, that looks pretty good. Our gap is even all around our lack of a gap. We're gonna go ahead and torque those down. You're gonna to wanna to torque those 213s down to 29 foot-pounds. Now that we have that situated, our next step is gonna to be to install our lower control arm. But to do that, we need to give ourselves a little bit more working room. So back to those two 18 millimeter bolts that we had up top, we're gonna to set up a screw jack. If you're flying along at home on the floor or in the driveway, you wanna use a floor jack for this. We're gonna go ahead and set one under here just to kinda of hold everything in place, and then we're gonna work on removing those two 18s and we'll go from there. All right, we have our screw jack situated. We're gonna go ahead and pull those two 18 millimeter bolts out. Now we're gonna go ahead and raise the whole assembly a little bit. You wanna be mindful that if you just raise it as it is, the strut is gonna bottom out on your axle. So just be careful of that. More than likely, you're gonna to wanna to pull the assembly separate from the strut, just so you have a lot of room to work with. All right, we're gonna start there, see if that's giving us enough room to get our arm started. Once you have it started, you can work on lining up your bolt hole. We have our 18 millimeter bolt in. We're gonna take our 21 millimeter nut and just get it started up top so that bolt doesn't fall through again. With that situated, now we're gonna work on getting our two 15 millimeter bolts started. All right, with those snugged up, we're gonna go ahead and do our best to torque them down to 48 foot pounds. Again, take it for account whenever you're using a torque wrench and some sort of extension or swivel, there's gonna be a bit of a loss. You can always add a couple pounds to make up for that. All right, 48 foot pounds. There's one. There's two. While we're at this point, we can go ahead and torque down our 18 and 21 millimeter combo. You're gonna to wanna to torque this down to 77 foot pounds. All right, with that buttoned up, now we're gonna work on getting our end of our arm situated with our ball joint. I'm gonna use a big pry bar to get this down as far as I can and see if I have enough space between the ball joint and the arm. Otherwise, we'll have to raise this whole assembly a little bit more. Using a second set of hands, I'm gonna have Mike here help me 
push the ball joint end of our knuckle towards our arm once I pry it down. Beautiful. With our arm on our ball joint situated, we can go ahead and install our 21 millimeter nut back on. And use the impact just to snug it up. And then we'll torque it down to 74 foot pounds. Now we're going to get a little bit more eye level with the vehicle and we'll work on installing our two 18 millimeter bolts back in. We're going to use a combination of just pressing down on this, the hammer and a pry bar to get everything back in place and lined up. And then we can grab our 21 millimeter nuts and torque everything down to 77 foot pounds. Once everything's snug up, we'll grab our torque wrench. And while we're here, we're also gonna reinstall our ABS sensor onto the bracket. And we're gonna go ahead and put our wheel back on. And we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our shield under here. Again, we have six 10 millimeter bolts. Don't forget to clip your power steering lines back in if you did remove those earlier out of their clips. And with that buttoned up and your wheels torqued up, that is gonna conclude this DIY, my good people. Overall, a little bit of a pain in the butt, but definitely a doable job. Almost easier to do it on the driveway or on the garage floor, I would argue, than the lift. That way you can just kind of leverage yourself, use your body weight, a couple floor jacks, makes life a little bit easier. Regardless, if you like this DIY, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this video and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.